And now, more with Social Women with your hosts, Pat Cruz, Amy Diaz, and Ronwin Dannenfelzer. This is like very exciting. Hello, Marcia Cane from the Women's Fund. That's who we've got here with us today and an incredible organization. Um, you? But we can't go around the table here without asking <laughs> you, what is your New Year's resolution? Well, we have a theme here because I don't set New Year's resolutions either. I pick a theme each year and by the end of the year my theme evolves and this year my theme is clarity and I'm three days into the new year and I can't tell you how many things about clarity have passed my hands either through email or books or articles and I'm not even looking for it so I'm looking forward to a very a good year um, successful year which is full of focus so you, you know, you said something interesting um, before we went on air, and you said, well, I, when you were talking about clarity, you said that you needed to know where you wanted to go yeah. in order to get there, and <laughs> right. that was part of the Right. Well, clarity. last year, my theme was really abundance, and when I came to the end of the year, I, d I don't write myself a letter, but I do take stock what I, what I want to let loose for the end of the year and not take into the new year with me and what I want to invite in. I think we've all done a little bit of that this year. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> and, um, and as I sort of looked through that and thought about that, I said, you know, it helped to bring abundance if you knew exactly what it was that you wanted. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, you know, clarity. I need some clarity to really understand in all aspects of my life. What is it I really want and how do I invite that? And not how and invite that in. So well, That's very, very fitting, especially considering the Women's Fund, which we're <laughs> going to talk about a little bit here. Um, and again, an amazing organization, really uh, helping women get from one place to another. Uh, you can explain it better than I can, but can you just give us a little bit of an idea, a, a paragraph, I'm going to go from there about what it is the Women's Fund is, if you could wrap it up in a nutshell. Sure. Um, as you said, we do a lot, so it's, it can be difficult, but I would liken the Women's Fund to uh, a cross between a think tank and um, a foundation or a phil philanthropic organization. So we do policy, advocacy, and research, all geared toward really um, understanding the status of women and girls in our state and how to move that forward, how to advance women and girls forward in our state. So, is that what I was reading that um, in some of the groups that you work with, which we can talk about in a second, but when you've got grants that you um, give out, how, what is that process or how, does pe how do people find out one if they fit into your grant process? Sure. So um, we do an annual grant making process um, and we're focused on systemic change, which is different from a lot of the direct service. We find that direct service is really important. So direct service meaning the shelter beds, um, you know, the actual workshops. We're looking at, um, we use this story called the babies in the river. You know, you're walking along a river and you see babies floating down the river and what do you do? Jump in and start pulling the babies out of the river. And uh, I come along and see you doing that, but I keep going, and you think all the things you think about me as I keep going and not watch, help jump in and help you pull the babies out of the river. But I'm going to the top of the river to find out who's throwing the babies in and get them to stop. And that's really what the Women's Fund is all about. It's looking at what are the systemic issues that keep the need for direct service, um, specifically for women and girls, happening, and how do we intervene so that that doesn't continue to happen. What a great... That is, that's a, that's fascinating awesome. yeah I like that um because if we if we kind of bring it back I was looking at again you've got what is it soar is one of the groups that you work yes. that you work with which is a uh, domestic violence right that's right that's sisters overcoming abusive relationships and we have had the good fortune to invest in that organization for 10 years and in the initial years it was really bringing women who were survivors of domestic violence uh, together and to give them leadership skills and teach them how to advocate for issues. And they're at a point now, this group has been um, around 10 or 12 years now, and they pick the issue that most affects them and have been building uh, advocacy campaigns around that, have been very successful at the courthouse and the state house in changing child custody and visitation um, to really help protect women and children during that process and also to stop driving women into poverty as a result of stays of courts and those sorts of things that happen, unfortunately, in the process. You've always said you're an overachiever, mm -hmm. obviously. Type A, written type all over a, me. Type A, written all over me, all over me. Literally, um, 16 years old, I graduated high school, decided to, to move away for school and Yes, definitely yeah. an overachiever. But one of my questions to you is, uh, what type of programs is it that you provide or, or you 
um, support for young young girls um, that are in high school that want to go ahead and empower themselves and, and provide to something that empowers others as well. Great. Over the years, we've been able to fund several projects. Um, one was a micro enterprise, and we had funded Southside Community Land Trust. And these were um, young women who were in high school and um, were really learning about a their Asian culture. Many of them for, were Asian backgrounds and um, how to uh, excuse me, market a product mm -hmm. and uh, a product that was actually useful to their family members who were farming through Southside Community Land Trust. A more recent um, grant that we've been have funded and has had great success in the city of Providence has been Young Voices, and that's been to empower young women to get policy advocacy skills, public speaking skills that they need to advocate for issues that matter to them. And they've really been focusing on uh, the Providence school system and really been very, very engaged in um, conversation and leading advocacy to make um, important changes for all students in the Providence school system. So, See, that that's great because I think you're teaching pe people to fish. Isn't that the other thing? That's you know, exactly Somebody's it. hungry, you don't give them a fish, you teach them uh, how to fish. And I was looking, um, you do a lot of work with Vision 2020, right, yes. as well. Because another part of the Women's Fund is leadership. I know you have a lot of um, women in very high, powerful positions mm -hmm. in Rhode Island that are part of your group and your think tank that really do yes. give advice on, uh, and, and help other women kind of move ahead. But tell me a little bit about your thoughts on leadership and what it is that you're, when you're saying public policy, that you're, you're trying to train people. What's like sure. Um, public policy is about decision-making, and it's about decision-making that affects our day-to-day -day living. And so um, when women are absent from tables of leadership where policy decisions are made, whether that's in the corporate office or at the state house, often issues that we're most concerned about don't come to the forefront. So we need women at all tables of leadership to make sure that issues that we ca are concerned with are addressed. Education is often one, health care is often one, transportation as we're balancing our crazy lives to make sure that our kids are in school and getting the health care they need. Women understand things from a very um, integrated approach, not that men don't, but because of the way we live our lives. Uh, we have an interesting take on public policy and um, we add to the leadership. Uh, uh, of any organization and so why would you use we're 52 percent of the population in the state why wouldn't you use all of your resources in the state to solve the state's issue why only use 48 percent well if you want to make a change you got to have a voice right and that's what yeah. you're doing is you're not only helping people find their voices and women and girls and these issues that need to be taken to the you know the senate floor and the, and the house floor but that's that's where i, I really see what you're doing mm -hmm. uh, and the difference that you're making it's amazing there's nothing more rewarding than talking to some women who have participated in one of the grant programs we funded and said, who have actually said to me, I was a victim and now I'm an advocate. Uh, that's, that's great. and we, That's very powerful. And the women have the voice. They do. Yes, we do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, so we do. If somebody's got a, you know, an idea or an organization mm -hmm. that they're trying to kind of push through, can, do they just reach out to you and see about either, did you do training as well as grants sure. or do you have workshops that working with women? We do a, a series of different activities. One of our major um, activities or strategic initiatives is called the Women's Policy Institute. And we have seven women right now. Now a, a very diverse group of women from, I think our youngest is in her earlier mid-20s and our oldest is somewhere in her late 60s. And um, we train them soup to nuts in policy advocacy. You know, everything from uh, a civics course to how to do policy research, to how to write a bill, to get a bill sponsor, to testify on this, um, f the General Assembly floor or in committee, um, and even towards passing legislation. So. Um, and many of those women go on to do public policy in their nonprofit organizations or create new nonprofit organizations and lead those. So. Well, wow. You know, I don't know if you know this, but all right, girls, guess how, what's the percentage of women that are in office in Rhode Island? Got it? What do you think? Throw a number out. 12. Nope. Three. No, it's, but it's, it's low. It's I would say 20-ish. Yeah. Ooh, good. <laughs> Yeah, is, it? <laughs> is it? It's 22 percent. Really? It's up uh, from 19 percent in 2006. Wow. So we're slowly climbing up. Um, through our RIGAP project, we've actually been working with the governor's office to increase the number of women serving on boards and commissions in the state. 
Last year, we were at 15%. He promised by the end of his first year in office that we'd be at 30%. We're a little over 30%. And uh, he's working to gain parity for women and men serving in those positions at the end of his term. And so we're really proud of our work in that area, and we'll continue to work to engage more women in leadership in our state. That's that's fantastic. That's wonderful. Well, actually. we don't have any more time for our, for our segment, <laughs> and we would love to um, continue speaking with you. But if our listeners would like to get in touch with you or learn more about the Women's Fund work, and they do so. Uh, best to go on the web, www.wfri.org, or you can find us on Facebook, the, Facebook, the Women's Fund of Rhode Island, and we're also on twi- Twitter, Women's Fund RI. Great. Thank Thank you you. so much for all the work you are doing. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here.